In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. is from the Gospel of St. John. It's a beautiful passage about the disciples in a boat. And it's all around the theme of fear. Because uh, when you get into a boat, you get into the water, surrounded by the oceans, by the waves and the sea creatures in it, the wind, the great waves, it can be quite frightening. And uh, this is what St. John tells us in a very, very short passage, today's Gospel. When it was evening, so it's getting dark, there's no sun, there's no light. When it was evening, the disciples of Jesus went down to the sea, embarked in a boat, and went across the sea to Capernaum. It had already grown dark, and Jesus did not yet come with them. The sea was stirred up because of a strong wind that was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat. And they began to be afraid. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. They wanted to take him into the boat. But the boat immediately arrived at the shore to which they were heading. Well, in today's gospel, we see the Lord clearly walking on the water demonstrates his authority over nature by actually walking on water. And if you look through scriptures, especially the Old Testament, you'll see that water is always a symbol of danger, a symbol of chaos, of something you just like you can't control. And, uh, in fact, at the very beginning of time, right in the very first lines of the book of Genesis, we are told that the world was a formless void, and it is described as empty, and it was dark, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the deep, meaning it was just like formless water, just dark water. It's as though the Spirit longed to like, hover over the waters and will long to enter into that water and make something happen. Mm-hmm. And so, in the very beginning, we see how God puts order into that. First, it's just formless. There's nothing. There's just dark water. Not even any animals in there. And he said, let there be light. And then the, God called the light day. He called the darkness night. He separated the waters from the land. He called the dry ground land, and he called the waters the seas. So he's, he's God. So he's beginning to put order in the very nature that he created. And it always says God saw that it was good. Then he added the fish and all the creatures, and obviously in the end he created man. And so by having the Lord walk on the water, water like that, he is signaling his lordship over all the powers of darkness, all the powers of disorder in our life. Indeed, you could say even over the devil himself. And uh, we can even think of the passage from the book of Exodus where the Jews are scrambling and running from the Egyptians that are running after them, and they are running and running and running, and they confront the waters of the Red Sea. And so Moses stops he prays intensely in front of that water and the water splits open and the, 
and the people of Israel are able to walk right in the midst of waves. Like there's waves, there's a wall of water on either side and they walk through it. And then when the Egyptians come, the water goes back down and destroys them all. It evokes the power of water and how the people of, of the ancient people, the ancient world, really, they really feared the sea, the water. And now here too, Jesus is mastering those waves. He's actually walking on them, even though there was a storm. And that image of the disciples with Peter in that boat is an image of the church, that the church and the followers of Jesus have gone through many upheavals in the history of the church. There were doctrinal heresies, there were moral uh, you know, problems in the church, uh, and the church has gone through many storms throughout its history, up and down. Okay? But Jesus is always close by, Peter is there, and so that boat is an image of the church, but it is also an image of the upheavals in our own life, especially, well, not only especially, but often when we're quite young. And, uh, of course, when the disciples saw him, what did they think? They said, it is a ghost. Another gospel say, it is a ghost. It is a phantom. It is something, you know, a ghost is something you, like, you can't grasp it. You don't know what it is. Something... I mean, ghosts are always scary to us. They're just spirits. They're, you never see friendly ghosts, as far as I know. You know it's a, and uh, you know, we can't seem to understand their intention. So they thought Jesus was a ghost. And of course, the words that are very comforting to us is that he said, It is I. It is me. Do not be afraid. And just hearing his words, or just hearing the tone of his voice, do not uh, be afraid. And some, sometimes it happens, right? we don't see Jesus in our life when we're terrified. You could say, you know, little children, they're terrified sometimes of bad dreams and they run to their parents. Or they may be terrified by bullies at school. Or maybe just in your life, you may be, have to suffer some unforeseen pain some hardship, or just the fact of uncertainty of what the future holds. You don't know what you're going to study necessarily. You don't know what kind of life you will have, if God is going to invite you to have a family, right? Um, you know, we think, for example, of how often we think about the possible dangers ahead. I mean, probably just today, if you came here by car, the, probably the first thing you did, and the first thing I would do too, is you put your seatbelt on. Put your seatbelt on. Okay? And um, some people, if they go on a motorcycle, they'll put their helmet on. They go skiing, they put their helmet on. Okay? Thinking of the possibility, if I were to have an accident, it's, I have to be protected, I have to be ready. It's all a function of what might happen. And uh, as you may have heard, that famous quote from Winston Churchill, who was the Prime Minister of England during the war, at a time when they were very concerned. Everybody was worried about an invasion of the Germans. The Germans had already bombed a part of London. They only had enough fuel to go a certain distance. They bombed and then they came back. So they didn't have that much uh, effect. I mean, they did bomb London, but many English were very, very afraid that the Germans would, would come in and invade. And uh, after the war, Churchill said that the things that I most feared in my life actually never happened. I mean, the, the Germans never actually invaded London, right? And perhaps why, that's why Jesus tells the apostles, do not be afraid. It seems like he's, when he says, do not be afraid, it is I, it's as though he's getting closer. And, and we have to remember this, especially when we are going through a hard time, when we're suffering in something, when we are having a hard time, the Lord in some way is closer to us. I mean, imagine, the Lord said in the gospel, he said, that the one who is hungry, you gave him food. The one who is thirsty, you gave him drink. The one who is a stranger, you welcomed him. 
I was naked and you clothed me. You know, all that passage from St. Matthew. I was sick and you visited me. Right? Truly I say to you, you did it to, as far as you did it to the least of my brothers, you did it to me. When we help somebody, alleviate somebody in their suffering, the Lord is saying, you did it to me. Well, if this were to happen to us, if we were to be suffering something, not somebody else now, but we, well, in some way, the Lord is coming to us as well. He is close to us. He then comes to us, meaning He will never leave us alone no matter what happens to us in our life. Because it's very important that we understand or embrace the fact that suffering in life is inevitable. In one way or another, we will suffer. In one way or another, we will go through a sickness. Those who we love will go through sicknesses and die. We, too, will eventually die. And that makes us suffer to think of the loved ones that they will get sick and die, or just die directly. In other words, there are always suffering in our life. There will always be storms in our life. This is part of the geography of our life. The wind currents, the mountains, that's what they say happens on the Lake of Genesaret where that storm took place. Just by the configuration of the mountains and the wind currents and who knows what, that storms there tend to happen very suddenly. Like they're very hard to predict. They just come like boom, like that. So you could be in the middle of a tranquil fishing holiday on the Lake of Genesaret and then boom, this big storm wells up very, very suddenly. And so sometimes the Lord will come to us in the form of suffering. He's not a ghost. Sometimes, in other words, Jesus comes to us disguised in the form of a cross. He doesn't always come to us brilliantly dressed, um, luminous and with his face shining as he does when he comes to the apostles uh, after the resurrection. There, he was luminous, he was beautiful, he was amazing. He doesn't always come. Sometimes he comes in the form of a cross. That is, the pain that we experience in our life. But he is there. Just as he said to the apostles who were freaking out, it is I. Do not be afraid. You know, one time, St. Catherine of Siena, in the 14th century, she had a lot of visions, right? Like, God would always speak to her. She had like trances where she was speaking to God. And one day, the Lord appeared to her and he was holding two crowns. One crown was a crown of diamonds, gold and diamonds. And the other crown was the crown of thorns that we all, well, we all know the crown of thorns. And he said to her, well, which one of these crowns do you want, Catherine? Which one? And Catherine said, well, Lord, which is the one that you wore? because I don't think you ever wore the golden crown of kingship, the golden crown with diamonds and rubies. When they wanted to make you king, you just said, no, I, I'm, this is not, I'm not a political king. I'm not a, I'm not a figure of authority. And you rejected that crown, but you accepted the crown of thorns. Well, that is the crown that I will take. And she took that crown. And that, of course, is the, thr- the crown of thorns, the crown of suffering. And this moment really pleased the Lord a lot. She said, that is the one that I want. And she knew that she would be with him if she wore the very same crown that he wore. So it's true. There are bad things out there. There are difficult things out there. But we can always be certain that we can come close to him in those hardships. We not must not let the devil fear us or make us paralyzed with anxiety and fear. He does not go further away from us when we suffer. So we ask our Blessed Mother, here we have her with the child and St. Joseph in a moment apparently of peace, but soon she would suffer too. But she would suffer always close to the Lord Jesus. She's close to him here, but she was close to him also at the foot of the cross. Remember those words of our Lord, do not 
be afraid. I am he, I am with you. This, these are the first words that Pope John Paul II said when he first inaugurated his pontificate. He, he kept saying, you know, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to bring Christ in the crossroads of everyday life, in the work, in school, in the family, in all the events. Because you may suffer, but Christ will be there with you. So do not be afraid eh, to bring Christ in all those crossroads of, of everyday life. Jesus reaches out to us. He says, it is I. Do not be afraid. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Amen.